You know what? Let's take a look at Venom Snacks first. This is from Avowed. I've seen Avowed briefly, and I'm like, not interested. I can already tell he's lame. Okay. Let's turn around and show him what we've uh, accomplished. <laughs> um, exactly. It's, uh, it's just... My hands on now? I haven't looked any. You look like the way you're designed to look. Uh, it's not surprising how repulsive Avowed looks when you consider the poisonous source it's being spewed from. Gamer-hating feminists. Obsidian have been this terrible is, for years. This has got to stop. This right here has got to stop. This is the source. <laughs> I swear, man. Okay. All these crazed feminists and all these women that want to go out there and have careers they are not the cause of the problem so to speak they are a symptom of the problem they are they are a mere symptom okay the cause is weak fathers that are not raising their daughters to be successful wives to be successful mothers Instead, you have daddy's little princess and then you raise a narcissistic, rebellious woman that goes out there and tries to emulate a man and have a career. That's what it is. It is the man, the weak father, that does not raise a successful wife for the future. When she turns 18, 19, 20, she should be married off and start her own family. Those first like 18 years should be her learning how to become a successful wife and mother. And then you marry her off. 18 years of that, she should be successful already. Instead, she becomes daddy's little princess. And, and then she becomes this narcissistic, entitled bastard. And wants to be a man. And then joins gaming studios and ruins them. Because now she has her own version of the world. You know, you know it's like those girls that get, that get ran through. And that's their way of... And I quote, discovering themselves. I gotta discover myself. And the only way to do this is to get ran through by the football team and get pumped and dumped a thousand times. And then I'm gonna hate men for it. <laughs> I'm strong and independent. Anyways, that's how I see it. Obsidian have been terrible for years now, turning out shitty games like The Outer Worlds that really was just a dated, thinly veiled communist manifesto. Elon Musk must save the game company? One Ooh. minute from the trailer for Avowed. And it just reminded me of Veilguard and how compromised and just intentionally grotesque it was. And of course, as gay as possible. Hey, you haven't returned You are gay! It hits every mandatory checklist item for woke games, pronouns, a Pixar-like bubbly art style, an MCU superhero yeah, Exactly! Exactly. The art styles have been getting so bad in these games. They're always hyper-colorful. Um, the characters are more rounded and soft looking. You could just feel the the feminist confusion coming, like leaping off these characters and smacking you in the face. Hold on, Gamza. Married off at 18. What happened to married off at 13 in the Bible? Uh, give me the verse for that one, my man. Because I don't ever remember a verse in the Bible that says marry her off at 13. You're insane. Not powers that don't belong anywhere near a fantasy game. Avowed has already been heavily delayed, and directors have changed mid-project, and of course, numerous developmental issues have happened behind the scenes, which really seems to indicate this game is dog shit. The gameplay favors simplistic action mechanics to appeal to a larger audience, and a streamlined, classless build system. But we have seen time and time again that going against your own RPG enthusiast audience is a good way to kill your studio. And of course, capping your console ports to 30 frames in 2024. Really? And the default player character non-binary. It's just the final <laughs> nail in the coffin. So let's have a look. You capped it at 30 frames a second, and then your main character is non-binary, of course. Boy, that sounds like a fun game. Look at this train wreck. Firstly, the female NPCs in Avowed are built like linebackers. Oh, man! Damn! It's ma'am! Makes me fucking sick to just look at them. <laughs> it's even made worse by the first person camera. These designs alone should be enough to end this studio. 
I really have to ask again, who is this made for? If this intended audience uh, themselves. actually exists, they are truly deranged individuals. Bioware yeah. and Obsidian have had a very similar arc in recent years of just circling the drain. Both were once known for exceptional storytelling and games that are finally remembered decades later. Like with Knights of the Old Republic 2 and Fallout New Vegas. Yeah, that dude now, got depending chopped. Depending on who you ask or how you feel about it. That dude was given the England experience. New Vegas is even more respected than Fallout 3 and especially Fallout Croy 4 and the Trashy 76. Now that's a noise. In the 2000s, writer Chris Avalon was given the creative freedom to explore political and philosophical quandaries without ham-fisted resolutions, which could never happen now outside of an independently financed game. Avalon respected gamers enough to give them nutrient-dense red meat to chew on. Yeah, look at them. He would them bob sticking up. all aspects of both capitalism and Marxism, sometimes even within the same conversation. Kreia and her schizoid lessons on the Force and her personal war on both the light and dark sides are genuinely some of the most fascinating arcs in gaming history. In more recent years, Obsidian's Pillars of Eternity was a highly lauded CRPG title, but as that undersold in the sequel, Obsidian is releasing something more queer-friendly. I understand the CRPG genre is not as popular as it once was, but it yeah, I can see that. Golden Reaper, five bucks. Thank you, my good man. I want to marry my daughter to a pagan so I can have nice rain from my for my crops. Why? Is it because she's going to be crying all the time? <laughs> got him, boys. Got him. Vow doesn't you, look like an organic shift to save their company or to make something that will actually sell well or be good. But it's a way to push their left wing message. What is that? that Ray Mysterio? Few people want to hear when they're playing a damn video game. Outer World signaled the end of Obsidian's solid run with terrible writing and leftist preaching and retarded NPCs that set the bar low enough for Starfield to happen. Even putting aside the writing, it was just a slog with dated Bethesda-like gameplay. It felt like it could have been released in 2010. I think as both legacy studios and legacy IPs are being gutted and slowly eroded through like cultural vandalism and self-inserting, the patterns are easier to notice in the industry than pre-2020. These activist developers hold such contempt for their own audience and gamers that yes. just a handful of screenshots of their games or 30 seconds of a trailer is enough. Enough to be a red flag. Because, like, if you ever notice, like, the way that they do, like, a lot of these self-insert type characters, they're always these insufferable, narcissistic bastards. Or I should say bitches. And But it's a self-insert if you think about it. And what does this character do every single time it gets in these movies and these video games and stuff? They start lecturing you and telling you that you're bad or that they don't need you. So that's the overall tone. Like I said, they're like Pokemon. They've hurt themselves in their confusion. They confuse power, masculinity, with just being an asshole and not caring for anybody. They, they try to emulate and become the man they could never lock down and get and marry. But they don't know what a good man is because they've been ran through and pump and dumped by like probably 10 dozen dudes already. So they think just being a straight up asshole and narcissistic is like what being manly or a leader quality is. It's like, well, no wonder why you've been pumped and dumped. You don't even know what you're doing. Hogan, two bucks, entertaining stream. Thank you, my good man. Greatly appreciate it. God bless you, man. The size of Obsidian's ESG score. So and they're just not interested in you. They, all they want to do is lecture your shit. ass. So Obsidian's art director, Matt Hansen, and Elon Musk's current online feud says a lot about how bleak the industry is looking on both sides of this fucking eternal <laughs> culture war. Musk just a few days back said that pronouns are unacceptable in video games which of course he's right about. After Musk posted, Hansen was essentially rubbing his hands together online like a fucking supervillain. <laughs> Gleeful he got the attention of Musk at the expense of helping to ruin the game he's working on. Oh wait, he didn't read, I thought he was gonna read that, that tweet. Let me go read it real quick. It's honestly deeply surreal to have the world's richest, shittiest boy whine about something I am making. I am quite frankly giddy. I cannot think of a single person in the world I would rather irritate. How brave and powerful. Attention of Musk at the expense of helping to ruin the game he's working on. 
The dirt that was brought up on Hansen looking for black artists to replace white people in the game industry isn't surprising or shocking. Hey, fellas! <laughs> Kill Whitey! <laughs> but it shows that this woke virus has always been a white-hating ideology and human-hating at its core. Matt Hansen's feminine and racist outlook has become the hive mind of these pathetic AAA studios. Dissecting and exposing oh, and, the And that's the thing, is these people are so blatantly racist with how they treat white people. It, it is crazy. And I say this as a, uh, a marginalized minority to which the white people destroyed... Uh, my ancestors and forced me to build the railroads and walk the Trail of Tears, I would still, even at that point, say thank you, white people, for all the technology and shit that you've given us. But, uh, no, it's, it's, it's crazy just to see how openly and blatantly racist that they can be against white people. It's insane. By the way, enjoy those uh, railroads. reason games are being ruined is a topic that YouTube tends to not like. But I really don't give a shit. I commend Musk for publicly calling out this propaganda in the video game industry. Whether he organically cares about any of this, it's really hard to say. But I do respect that he at least points it out and has been more frequent about siding with gamers. What's really cringeworthy though about Musk is his proposed idea to make gaming great again is to make an AI gaming studio, which is about the... <laughs> hey, my, oh, let me go back a little bit. This this would be me if I if I played Avowed right here like that skeleton in that tomb. Make this is me after I played the game. Is to make an <laughs> AI gaming studio, which is about the least appealing anti art option available to a man with unlimited financial resources. But no one can ever truly trust a billionaire who has no tangible connection to normies. Fortunately, Musk looks to be going after Hanson's career, and if he ends up getting him fired, then kudos. But I don't know about you guys. I'm not interested in video games designed by bots. Both Xbox and Obsidian have stayed very quiet while Hanson has gone out of his way to alienate fans of the developer. And it's just bizarre. Do they really not give a shit? Listen, as I said before, billionaires, multi-millionaires, these dudes by default, the reason why they get into these positions of power is because they are min-maxers. If it can be abused, it will be abused. And so since AI and these powerful algorithms are so popular right now, and it's kind of like the, the forefront of many things, if they can replace your ass, they will. If they can do it, they will. Min-maxers, like I said before. It'd be like saying, um, you right now, if you could legally glitch out an ATM like you wouldn't get in trouble for it at all. If you could glitch out an ATM and pull out $20,000 right now, would you do it? Oh, I wouldn't do that. I work for my money. I, you know, I work hard. Shut the fuck up. If given the opportunity, you would go straight down to that ATM and you would withdraw $20,000 because that, that would, that's how they see this stuff. If I can do it, I will. And if I'm the only person that manages to do it and get away with it, you bet your ass off that I would do it. That's how they see these things. If it can be abused, it will be abused. If they could fire your ass and get rid of you and replace you with an algorithm, oh, dude, they'd do that in a heartbeat. But on, on, the, on the outside, in the public eye, I just really care about people and I want to give them raises and I really, you know, I really like our developers. Blah, 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 blah. They'll tell you anything that you want to hear. They'll sweet talk your ass all day, every day. Behind closed doors, how do we get rid of these people? I guess we don't care either about their stupid woke games. Public acknowledgement of rot and apologies to fans seemingly don't happen anymore. And thankfully, gamers would rather spend money on something that doesn't hate them for existing. The same playbook by gaming journalists for every woke RPG is being rolled out right now. is avowed as being called an evolution of New Vegas. And calling another Outer Worlds game a possibly a good thing. Even the journalists seem to be having a very hard time finding enough positive words to fill an article. Even after Avowed financially fails and Obsidian doesn't make any money on it, it won't matter. We're going to continue to keep getting these shitty, woke RPGs because they don't give a fuck. They're essentially no, they don't at all. Also, I think you guys misunderstood me. What I, I said that it would be you would be legally able to withdraw that money from the ATM. You're not stealing money from anybody. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying if there was a way that you could legally withdraw $20,000, but you, your bank account doesn't get hit for it. You, I, I know many people would. 
Me personally, I don't even know what that glitch would be, but yeah, maybe, I guess if I was desperate, <laughs> but I'm not a min-maxer, I'm just not, there's a reason why I'm not running ads on this, on this, uh, live stream, because I'm not so trying to min-max throwing it. out their middle fingers, maybe I should though, putting these non-binary inserts and saying, what the fuck are you going to do about it? When this is going on unchecked for so long that Elon Musk has to come after you and start threatening to make an AI video game development company. I mean, uh, Yellow, you bring up a great point. It says, uh, that's a weird way to put it. At that point, aren't I just entitled to it? Now you can see it from the perspective of a billionaire who would rather replace you with an algorithm. It has nothing to do with morality and everything. Well, I'm entitled to do so because I can and I will because it's cheaper. That's what I'm trying to talk about here. That's the mindset of min-maxing. They're not seeing it as in, I'm hurting this man's family and he needs, you know, he's worked for the company for 10 years. They don't, they don't, that doesn't even enter their mind. What enters their mind is you cost too much and this algorithm is cheaper. So I should do it. I mean, what the fuck are we even doing? It's enough to make me even question this entire hobby at this point. It's truly, truly bleak. So what do you guys think about Avowed? Will it be as bad as it looks? And can Elon Musk save gaming with artificial intelligence? Let me know. <laughs> I think it's marketing at the end of the day. Elon Musk didn't get where he's at because he's just like some out of touch doofus. He's great at marketing. He's very good at provoking responses from people and using terms like, you know, to get AI to make these games and stuff. I could see him definitely being serious about it, but it also gets people to talk about it. And getting people to talk about you in a lot of ways is very important when it comes to marketing. So I think he's just, he's just doing what he does best. He's provoking along with uh, good marketing overall. It's like walking hand in hand. They're very close to each other. Oh, that's why no one hires for the job? Hmm? Hey, man. A lot, of these, a lot of these businesses nowadays, the way that it'll work too as well, is if you've been working for a company for like, let's say 10 years, oh, I'm, I'm loyal to the company. Eh, I wouldn't do that. But you're loyal for 10 years. Let's say you get paid $200,000 a year. If they could hire somebody fresh out of college for half your pay, $100,000, they're going to hire him and they're going to have you train him and then they're going to let you go. They just saved $100,000 per year by getting you to train your replacement. Oh, but I'm more experienced in it. That doesn't matter. They're looking at the bottom line. They're looking at the bottom line. If you are absolutely necessary, then they'll keep you. And maybe they'll have you train the new guy for one or two years. And then they'll get rid of you. That's why a lot of these companies, they have a high uh, revolving door. They have a higher like, uh, like I forgot what they call it. Turnout? Yeah, something like that. I just call it like the revolving door. They keep it spinning. old Out with the old, in with the new. And you're just going to keep replacing yourself essentially. Turnover. There you go. Thank you.